All right, next, we're going to use a constrained attribute because we want the mouse, when we move the um, mouse left to right, we want the paddle to follow the mouse. So we want to constrain the paddle to the mouse's position. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use a constrained attribute. So here's a constrained attribute. And when you click on that, also notice that it gives you a nice little definition here of what these things are. So as you click through them, it tells you what they do. So that's a nice little feature here. Okay. And so unlike the change attribute behavior, this behavior continuously updates the value of one attribute to that of another. For instance, an actor's X and Y position can, con can continuously be constrained to that of the mouse, which is exactly what we're doing here. So we're going to drag this over and drop it in here. Okay, then you notice you've got these um, interesting um, boxes here. So what we're saying is we want the we want to say that we want the position of um, the mouse to be constrained to the x value. Okay, so right now what we're saying is we want the player's paddle position of the x value okay and if you click on that it should end up to be self dot position dot x okay I'll do that again so you go to attributes player paddle which is considered the self okay position and then hit x double click on x and it will give you this Okay, and basically what we want to set it to is this formula. You can uh, follow along here. What I'm it's the maximum open parentheses min minimum open parentheses and uh, let's see we're gonna hit our down arrow here. And we're going to go to game. Oh, device, I'm sorry. Devices, not game, device, mouse, position, X. All right, so take a look. This is what it should look like. Max, open parentheses, min open parentheses, game.mouse.position.x. Okay, click in there, hit comma, 480, close parentheses, comma, zero, close parentheses. Okay, now, so that basically constrains the mouse uh, to that. Well, just for the fun of it, let's, you know, see what this looks like. Okay, so you can see a couple of things. I notice um, besides, you know, this is working properly. The paddle is following the X and Y, the X um, position of the mouse. So as I move to the left, it goes to the left. As I move to the right, it goes to the right. Um, and one thing you notice is the little white area here that some of my box, I need to adjust that and move it off uh, screen a little bit because that little white line should not be there. That's my wall peeking in here, okay? But otherwise, um, everything is working good so far. Okay, let me go back to the editor here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next step here. So I'm going to group um, these next commands. So the next thing I'm going to do here is hit the plus group sign here to add a group. And inside that group, okay, there's going to be a couple of things we're going to do. But before we can do that, we need to um, define a self attribute for the paddle. Okay, so here's our attributes for the actor. So if we click plus, okay. We want um, this to be a real value, okay? 
And so um, what we're going to create is a real attribute, okay? And we're going to call it starting y, okay? And notice immediately the starting value is 0, and it's a real number, okay? Hit enter to take it. All right, and once you have that, we're good to go with the rest of the programming for the paddle. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in a change attribute this time. Before we worked with constraint attribute, now we're going to bring in a change attribute. So let's look for change attribute. Here it is. Bring that right in this box here under the group. Okay, and um, in the change attribute, we're going to hit this down arrow here. And we're going to go to attributes, player paddle, okay, which is self. And we're going to look for this new variable that we created starting y. What we want to do is we want to set that y to whatever the starting position of the, the on the screen of the mouse in the up and down y value. We want that y value. Okay, and so to do that, let's go here, down arrow, and we're looking for um, attributes, self, position this time, and this time it's y. Okay, so it should look like that, self.position.y. Okay, and so as you go, you're going to hit the player paddle, position, Y check mark to accept it, and so that's what that should look like. Okay, and don't forget this is video, you can always pause and, and rewind. All right, so next, next we want to bring in the constraint again. Here's the constraint we were just with change, now we're going to hit bring in a constraint attribute, bring that down. Okay. And we want to we want to constrain again this attribute self position y okay to the self starting of y okay let's do that self and then back to our variable that we created of y check okay. So that's what it should look like. So basically what we're doing is we're telling the variable first when it first game first starts it'll be zero. And when it actually runs, we want it to wherever the mouse is, we want it to take the value of that mouse position. So this one, self position dot y, is the internal variable. As soon as the game starts, it ha it gives the it sends that number that's automatically stored of where the mouse is on the screen where the y position is it sends that number and puts it in that variable so remember that value was zero but if it's up here someplace it might be like 100 or something 180 and then it will put it in that starting y value okay um, then what's it saying is constrain whatever this is which is the up in the y value with, that's built into the game system. Whatever that is, it says automatically constrain it to whatever the y is, the y value. So they stick together. Okay, so there will be one in the same. All right, and so that's the programming for the paddle. Okay, um, so we'll see you in the next video, so we can continue on with other parts of the game.